I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, yeah! moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. I bet I can suck up my juice faster than you can. You're on. Ha ha, I told you I could suck it up faster. You know, actually, I didn't see anyone do any sucking at all. Are you kidding? Didn't you just watch that? Sure, I saw the atmosphere blow juice into your mouths. You lost me. Well, you see, in physics, there's no such thing as suction, only blowing from higher pressure to lower pressure. Think of it like this. High pressure means that the air molecules, the particles making up the air, are pushing more against things compared to air in other areas. This can be caused by having more air molecules of air present in a given amount of space, like when you blow up a balloon. Or that the molecules are moving around faster and therefore hitting harder and more often, like when you heat up air in a pressure cooker. Air always travels from areas of higher pressure to areas of lower pressure because the higher pressure air pushes harder than the lower pressure air. Take this box for example. This side with all the balls would be our higher pressure, and this area that's empty will be our lower pressure. When I remove the barrier, the balls flow from higher to lower pressure, just like air. By moving from the high to the lower pressure areas, the pressures attempt to reach equilibrium, or even out. In other words, air blows from higher towards lower pressure. This is also how our lungs work. Look at this model. The balloon represents our lungs. When I pull down on this membrane, I expand the space inside, just like when we use our muscles and diaphragm to expand our chests. That creates lower pressure inside than outside, so the outside air rushes in. We inhale. To exhale, we compress our chest using the same muscles, just like when I push in this membrane. This creates a higher pressure inside compared to outside, so the air rushes out. Now, if we apply this to some of our exhibits, Stepping down on this air bladder creates higher pressure inside by squeezing the air close together. So, the air moves from a higher pressure inside the bladder to a lower pressure outside and carries the rocket with it. This motor produces an area of low pressure due to its spinning. So the higher pressure air outside blows into the tube and pushes the ping pong ball. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. So we're gonna repeat the drinking race, but this time with a twist. This time they're gonna drink it with two straws in their mouths. Well, that's easy. We'll drink twice as fast. You misunderstand. One straw will be in your cup. The second straw will be outside the cup in the air. On your mark, get set, go. What they don't know is I've given them an impossible task. When we drink through a straw, we use the muscles in our mouth to create an area of low pressure inside our mouth. So the air outside has higher pressure. Normally, with only one straw, the air outside can't enter the mouth to equalize the pressure except through the straw. So it pushes down on the liquid in the glass, which pushes it up the straw and into your mouth. The problem this time is the second straw. They are still using their muscles to create the lower pressure inside the mouth, and there's still higher pressure outside. But this time there's a straw that allows the higher pressure of the air outside to travel directly into the mouth and equalize. Because that's the easiest route to equalize pressure, the liquid doesn't really move. Go ahead and try it at home. See how well you can do. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.